So today, I'm going to talk about heterotic and type 2 string theory. And since the lecture is going to be a little more technical than what uh, we had uh, earlier, okay, I'll try to work out most of the things on the blackboard. Okay, although once in a while, I'll try to uh, go back to the slides. But in case you have difficulty seeing the blackboard, you can just let me know and I'll put on the appropriate slide. Okay. So we'll be focusing mostly on heterotic because type 2 is essentially more of the same. So heterotic wall sheet theory. Okay. So this is a super conformal field theory. Okay. So it has several components. First, we have matter super conformal field theory. Okay. And here we are not going to make any assumption about what the background is. Okay. This analysis will be uh, basically valid for a general background. So which means general matter super conformal field theory. But of course, it has to have the right central charge. So CLCR will be 26 and 15. If you, sorry, 10 and 15. No, this is fine. We see 26 and 15. So left moving sector will have 20 central charge 26. Okay. Right moving sector will have central charge 15. Okay. So for the, for example, if it's flat space time, this 15 comes, 10 of these come from the space time mm -hmm. scalars, space time uh, bosons. And uh, sorry, wall sheet uh, scalars and 5 comes from the wall sheet formulas. Then we have the ghosts, okay. In fact, there are many ghosts. So, BC, okay. these have, oh, let me write it here. So, BC, these have CLCR. As let's see in this convention, zero minus twenty six. Then you have B bar, C bar. These are the usual ghosts that I have been hearing about. So for this, CLCR is minus twenty six zero. Okay. So these are diffeomorphism ghosts. So these are diffeo. And then we have beta gamma, these are associated with fixing wall sheet supersymmetry. And these have CLCR as 0 and 11. So uh, as you can see in my notation, the holomorphic fields, these are holomorphic fields, these are right movers and the anti-holomorphic fields are left movers. And you can check that the total central charge always adds up to 0 both on the left and the right sector. So these are bosonic, so these are anti-commuting and these are commuting ghosts. Okay, so from the wall sheet perspective, these are bosonic fields. Okay. Nevertheless, it turns out that to describe fermionic string perturbation theory, you have to bosonize the beta gamma system. So we bosonize beta gamma. And the way one does it is that we identify, we introduce three more fields, okay, xi, eta, phi. Okay. So these are anti-commuting fields on the wall sheet. This is commuting, okay, and is a scalar on the wall sheet. And the relationship between the original fields, beta, gamma, and the xi, eta, phi are as follows. So xi is eta e to the phi, sorry, gamma is eta e to the phi, beta is del xi e to the minus phi. Okay. 
And then we have the deltas, chronic deltas, delta, sorry, not chronic delta, Dirac delta, delta gamma is equal to the minus phi, and delta beta is equal to the phi. Okay, so this is the relationship between the beta gamma system and the zeta phi system. Okay, and all the operators that we'll be writing down will be constructed out of zeta and phi. Okay. Whenever you have operators written in terms of beta and gamma, you can use these relations to convert them back in terms of zeta and phi. Are there any questions? Okay. So it turns out that there are three quantum numbers which are important. Okay. These quantum numbers are the Gauss number. Then a new quantum number which is called the picture number and the final one of course is the GSO property, okay? whether a given field is GSO even or GSO odd because all physical operators have to be GSO even in this formalism. Okay? So what I am going to do is to write down the, these assignments for various fields that I have introduced here. Now, first of all, matter sector fields okay, have trivial host number and picture number. Okay, no host number and picture number. Then GSO, okay, the world sheet fermions, for example, are GSO odd. The world sheet scalars are GSO even. Okay, and for spin fields, there is a complicated transformation which I will not write down. Okay. But let us look at a host sector. So, C, C bar, these have assignment 1. 0 plus, okay, which means it has host number 1, picture number 0, GSO even. B, B bar, these have minus 1, 0 plus, okay, because B are anti host, C's are host. Gamma is a host, so it has 1, 0 minus, okay. So, notice that this is GSO odd, similarly beta is minus 1, 0, minus. Okay. So, notice that all the original fields, original host fields that we had in the problem, all carry picture number 0. Okay. So, the picture number in fact is something that appears after you do this bosonization. Okay. So, I will now write down the similar assignments for xi, eta and phi. Okay. So, xi has minus 1, 1 plus eta is opposite. So, 1 eta is 1 minus 1 plus e to the q phi, okay, these are the operators that we will be considering. Okay. This has 0 q and minus 1 to the q. And if we have something like del phi, these have 0, 0 plus, okay, which means this GSO even and it does not carry any quantum number. Okay. And you can easily check from this that if you know the quantum numbers of eta and e to the phi, okay, which is listed from the in the last column over there, you can easily work out what the corresponding quantum numbers for gamma and beta are. Okay. So, these are not no longer independent once you have specified these quantum numbers for xi, eta and e to the q phi. And in this convention, one can write down an expression for the BRST charge, which I will not do here. Okay. So, BRST charge, for example, carries ghost number 1, picture number 0, okay, because BRST charge is constructed purely in terms of the original ghost fields. Okay. That does not really require any xi and phi. And finally, one more operator I have to introduce the 
picture chaining operator, which you have been talking about, but I have not told you what it is. Okay, and now I'm going to write down explicitly the form of this. So this is the anti-commutator of, so let's say we insert it at z, it's the anti-commutator of QB with xi. Okay. And I can write down the explicit form of this. So this is this is C del xi plus e to the phi tf minus one quarter del eta e to the two phi b minus one quarter del of eta e to the two phi b. Okay. Where Tf is the super stress tensor of the matter fields. Super stress tensor of matter fields, matter is CFT. Okay. So again, I'm, I want to emphasize that we are not assuming what anything about what the matter is CFT is. So this is valid for flat background as well as curved background. Okay, as long as the background is a solution to equations of motion. Okay. But as long as it is a super conformal field theory, it will have a super stress tensor and that is what you have to use here. Okay. So this is the picture changing operator. And because BRST operator is nil potent, okay, this the QB commutator with this gives you 0. Okay. And you can easily work out the quantum numbers of this okay. and in the same notation as there, I will write the quantum numbers. It is 0, 1 plus, okay, it has ghost number 0, picture number 1 and it is ZSA. Okay, are there any questions? Okay. So, this will be one of the main building blocks in describing superstring part erosion theory. Okay. What is it that you have to compute to get the uh, 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 physical S matrix elements? Okay, so yesterday we introduced the notion of the Hilbert space of states. Okay. So there is a similar notion of what is the correct Hilbert space of states in this case. Okay. So the Hilbert space of states okay. are essentially okay. states in matter plus ghost. Super conformal field theory, okay. but we impose the same condition that this is annihilated by a B0 minus B0 bar and L0 minus L0 bar. Okay. This is the same condition that we impose for the bosonic string theory that you only work with a restricted class of states which satisfy this. So this Hilbert space, okay, we can divide it into infinite set of subsectors. Okay, so we call H n the subspace of H subspace of H carrying picture number n. N okay. and GSO even. Oh, I should have said that 
we impose this all the time. Okay, that you'll only consider states which are GSU even. Okay, so even which means that even though you use operators which are not always GSU even, okay, these for example are GSO odd operators. The actual vortex operators which will correspond to physical uh, which will correspond to off shell string states okay, will be taken to be GSU even okay, and satisfying this okay. and then if you want to impose on shell condition okay, then you also have to demand that the vortex operator is BRST invariant okay, but that is not something that we are going to impose now because we will be working with off shell amplitudes. Okay, so in this notation, now I can be more specific and you know, uh, introduce the notion of off shell states that we will be working with. Okay. So, off shell in a sector states by definition are states in H minus 1. Okay, so, these are states which carry picture number minus 1. And off shell Ramon sector states belong to H minus half. Okay, these are states which carry picture number minus half. If we are dealing with super strings instead of heterotic string, okay, then the story will be repeated both on the left and the right sector. Okay, here we have introduced a beta gamma system only on the right sector. Okay. In super strings, there will also be a beta bar gamma bar, okay. and you will have a notion of NS NS, which will be in H minus 1 minus 1, okay. NS R will be in H minus 1 minus half, right. Ramon Nebuchadnezzar will be H minus half minus 1, and then finally Ramon Ramon will be in H minus half minus half. Okay. So basically, the, uh, uh, there will be four sectors instead of two sectors. Okay, but otherwise it is the same, so I will not uh, do that explicitly. Okay, it is uh, good enough to just focus on the heterotic strings. Okay, are there any questions? So, it turns out that when you compute correlation functions on a Riemann surface, okay. there are anomalous conservation laws for both the ghost number and the picture number. Okay. So, on genus G, on genus G Riemann surface, okay. we need total host number and total picture number equal to 2 g minus 2. Okay, so, only those amplitudes are non-zero for which the total host number is minus 6 g minus 6 okay. and the total picture number is 2 g minus 2. For bosonic strings, okay, this condition is still there okay. and that in fact is the reason why we can only work with this 6 g minus 6 forms. If you have for example, n equal to 0, if you remember, we had 6 g minus 6 insertions of B ghosts. Right? I mean, those are precisely what was needed to produce this total cost number of minus 6 g minus 6. Okay. So, this is a statement which keep in mind total ghost number has to be minus 6 g minus 6, total picture number has to be 2 g minus 2. Okay. Now, as you will see this will be taken care of automatically okay, when you define the uh, form, okay. but let us see what it means, what this uh, statement means total picture number has to be 2 g minus 2. Okay. So, let us suppose that we are 
computing a an amplitude with m ns sector states and n ramon sector states okay so an amplitude with m ns and n r sector states okay as long as you take uh, even for g equal to uh, okay g equal to 1 and g equal to 0 and g greater than 1 as long as you have for example for g equal to 0 three punctures and for g equal to 1 one puncture this statement is true okay it's if you don't have any puncture then there are additional zero modes and you have to be a little more careful okay so if you take an amplitude with m ns and n ramon sector states each n s sector state carries picture number minus 1 right because n s sector states belongs to h minus 1 okay. each ramon sector states carries picture number minus half okay so we get a picture number so the vortex operators vortex operators give picture number minus 1 minus m Minus n by two. Okay, but we need total picture number two g minus two to get a non-zero answer. Okay, which means that you need to insert an operator okay, which carries picture number two g minus two plus m plus n by two. Okay. So what are those operators? Those are the picture changing operators that I wrote down here. Okay, so we need. we need so these picture changing operators in fact arise naturally when you if you start with integration over super modular space and then try to carry out the fermionic integrals but we will not follow that route we will simply use the fact that just from picture number conservation it looks like you need something which has to supply this many picture number the, this much picture number and picture changing operator is a natural object because this is brst invariant so when you insert this into a correlation function none of the brst properties okay will get spoiled okay so we'll try to compensate for the missing picture numbers by inserting these many picture changing op operators okay are there any questions yes e to the phi carries the host number yes yeah so host numbers are all being carried by psi and eta okay so now let me remind you what we have to do now okay so this is exactly the same task that we had for bosonic string theory the first task is to find the parameterization of the space pgmn okay i am now calling it pgmn because it's genus g m ns punctures and n ramon punctures okay we have to distinguish between ns and ramon uh, punctures okay so let's start with that task So parameterization of 
of E G M N. Okay. Now there are two kinds of coordinates of P G M N. Okay. The first kind of coordinates okay, are what we introduced yesterday. Okay. These are identical to what we had for bosonic strings. So the moduli and choice of local coordinates, choice of local coordinates. These are identical, you can be done in exactly the same way as in the bosonic theory. Okay, because it is the same parameterization, right? You just take the bosonic version P G M plus N. Okay, so let us write this. So you take P B now stands for bosonic. Okay. So it is the same coordinates, same way you introduce these coordinates as on P G M plus N. Okay, M plus N total number of punctures, genus G, and you introduce coordinates in that way. Okay, so you basically divide the Riemann surface into disks and uh, spheres, look at the transition function, and those transition functions are what level this. Okay. But now we have a new set of coordinates. Which are the locations of the PCOs? This is an extra data. Okay. So these I'll denote by YK, a complex coordinate, YK, okay, for K equal to 1 going up to 2G minus 2 plus M plus N by 2. Okay, so these are really two coordinates for each k because it is a complex. Okay, now tangent space. Okay, so, what are the possible tangent vectors of PGMN? So, tangent vectors are essentially infinitesimal moves in PGMN. Okay. So, again, there are two kinds. Okay. The first kind are the same as the tangent vectors. Of the bosonic. Okay, you just change the transition functions by infinitesimal amount and those as we have seen can be labeled by vector fields on the Riemann surface, okay, exactly as we had yesterday. But then there are few more, okay, those are the tangent vectors corresponding to deforming y's, okay, and those we can denote, these are normal ordinary coordinates, right. So, so y, each y k I should have said takes value on the Riemann surface. Okay, it is a complex coordinate, but it is on the Riemann surface. So these are del del y k and del del y bar k. Okay, there is the basis of tangent vectors on associated with the y deformation. Is this Clear? Okay. So this basically finishes the discussion of how to label, how to coordinateize PGMN, and how to parameterize its pet, its tangent space. Okay. So that basically finishes the first task. Now we go to the second. Okay. That you have to construct an omega p. Okay, and this is the identity that will that guides us in constructing omega p. 
Okay. Again, what I will do is I will write down the result for omega p okay. and the proof that it satisfies those identities again is a straightforward conformal field theory manipulation. Okay. You have to basically use various conformal field theory word identities and you can prove those. Okay. But let me now describe how to construct omega p. So, omega 0, ok, we start with omega 0 phi, ok, and phi let me remind you belongs to n fold, let me call it H n s m, so basically m copies of n s sector Hilbert space and n copies of the Ramon sector Hilbert space right? because there are n Ramon sector states and m Nebuchadnezzar sector states. So, phi is some uh, uh, state in this product Hilbert space. So, omega 0 in fact is simple, okay, it is more or less the same as in the case of bosonic string theory. So, 2 pi i, 2 pi i. times so the correlation function on the human surface okay, phi s, okay. but now we have to insert a product of picture changing operators. So, i equal to 1 to 2 g minus 2 plus m plus n by 2 chi of y j y i. Okay. So, you see if we did not insert this, the result will be 0, right, because phi together carries picture number minus m minus n by 2, right, that does not give a non-zero amplitude on the Riemann surface. So, in order to get something non-zero, okay, we had to ins insert something and what we insert is a product of picture changing operators, okay, and you see that the result depends on y, okay, because where you insert the picture changing operator of course, affects what the correlation function is. Is this definition clear? Okay, so, this is essentially generalizing what we did for bosonic strings, just inserting some extra picture changing operators. Now we come to omega p, omega p of phi. Here again we have to specify omega p by saying how to contract it with p tangent vectors, p arbitrary tangent vectors. Okay. And as you have seen the tangent vectors are of two kinds. Okay, the first kind or the second kind. Okay. Now, first let us suppose that all the p tangent vectors are of the first kind. Okay. Then the answer is exactly what we did, what we gave uh, last time for bosonic strings because the first kind of tangent vectors are what is inherited from what we had for the bosonic string. Okay. So, for the first kind, okay, so these are all of the first kind. The result is
Okay, we insert these products of beans. Okay, if, let me remind you if you have forgotten what BV is. B was the control integral. So we had seen that this first kind of tangent vectors, okay, for every tangent vector of this first kind, we can associate a vector field V i of z on S around some circle, around some C i, okay. and then we had defined B of V i as Zoom it was plus. Let me. Oh, I think one one over two pi. I, I didn't write. In fact, it's understood when you do these contour integrals. So let me use the same convention. Okay, so we just insert this B of i's. Now, the interesting question is what do we do if some of these tangent vectors are of the second kind, okay, either del del y k or del del y bar k. Okay, what is the rule for constra contraction of omega p with such tangent vectors? Okay. So, first of all, we for each tangent vector of the first kind, we do exactly the same thing. Okay. So, what will happen is that some of the b's will be removed, right? because there will be less number of tangent vectors of the first kind. So, instead of having this product, this is j equal to 1 to p. Okay. So, instead of having the product over j equal to 1 to p, it will be less than p, because it will be the number determined by the number of tangent vectors of the first kind. Okay. So, those b's will be removed, okay. but instead what we have to do something to show that it is being contracted with one of these tangent vectors. Okay, so, what are the rules? So, let me now write down the rules. So, if we contract with del del y k, okay, what effect does it have? The first we have to remove chi of y k. Okay, so, in this product that we had, okay, one of them would have been chi of y k, okay, the particular del del y k is being contracted with, you remove that from this product. And then we insert okay. So, where you remove B okay, at that place you insert this factor of minus del psi y k. So, this is the rule for contracting with del del y k, okay, much simpler than what we had for this tangent vector of the first kind. Okay. Contraction with del del y bar k is even simpler, it is 0. Okay, so, there is no contraction with del del y bar k. Okay. 
Is this clear? Okay, so omega basically has no component along the del del y bar case. Okay. Now this is of course definition. Okay, this definition is concrete. Okay, there is nothing no ambiguity in this. However, it requires some work to prove that with this definition, omega p satisfies the required identities. Okay, all the required uh, desired identities that it is supposed to satisfy it does in particular that identity which is crucial okay, for proof of uh, gauge invariance and various other things. Yes. Yes. No, M is just the number of NS punctures and N is the num number of Raman punctures. Oh, oh, sorry, this is m plus n. I am sorry. This should be m minus n. Yeah. Everywhere you, are, you see this, this has a total number of punctures. Yeah, so I just uh, borrowed it from the bosonic case, it is always a total number of punctures. P? Well, not a priori, at this stage, no. Okay. But the host number conservation, of course, will. <coughs> give a non-zero answer only for a specific choice of p, okay. And that choice is the dimension of the modular space over which you integrate, right, which is 6g minus 6 plus m plus n. So, that will come only when you fix the ghost number of phi, right. At this stage, I have not said anything about the ghost number of phi. I have only said fix the picture number, right. But once you fix the ghost number of phi, only one particular p can contribute. Okay, are there any other questions? Yes, the picture changing operator. So, the, I mean, if you remember, the relationship between x and x was basically q b with xi, right? Okay. So, q b carries 0 picture number. Okay. So, x and xi both carry picture number 1. Okay. So, there is no confusion. So, indeed, yes, total picture number has to be always the same, right? Because otherwise, you will, you will get 0 answer. Okay. And when you replace x by minus del xi, you are not changing the picture number of the operator. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, so if you are interested in on shell amplitudes, okay, the conventional on shell amplitudes, then this is the end of the story. Okay, you can take this definition of omega that I have given and you can compute on shell amplitudes. You just calculate the same uh, this omega 6g minus 6 plus 2m plus 2n, okay, with taking this state phi to be BR state invariant okay. and then we can prove by using exactly the same uh, uh, method that I used earlier that the result of the integral of omega over a section is independent of the choice of the section. So, you choose any section and integrate okay, and you will always get the same result and that is the on shell amplitude. Okay. So, if you have not seen how to compute the on shell amplitudes in superstring perturbation theory or heterotic string perturbation theory, this is a complete description of how you can compute on shell amplitudes in heterotic string theory. Okay. And for super strings as I said you basically have to repeat this also for the uh, uh, left moving sectors. Okay. There will be additional beta gamma host system, beta bar gamma bar correspondingly additional picture changing operators. Okay. But our goal of course is to construct off shell amplitudes and for that we have to also complete the third step, construct the gluing compatible section. Okay. And again here it goes in the same way as in the case of bosonic strings okay, with some a little additional subtlety which I am going to describe.
Okay. So basically, we doing compatibility. Okay, means that whenever we have a one PR Riemann surface, okay, where we have glued. Two Riemann surfaces. Okay. Then the choice of local coordinates around each puncture have to be what is induced from the lower genus surfaces. Okay. That was the bosonic uh, uh, string constant, and that constant still has to be satisfied for superstrings. Okay. The choice of local coordinates have to follow what we had used for uh, the bosonics uh, for the lower uh, genus surfaces. But now there is an additional constraint. Okay. An additional constraint comes from the fact that the choice of section involves not only specifying how we have chosen the local coordinate system, but also specifying how we have chosen the picture changing of partial locations. Okay. So these crossed circles are picture changing operators okay, in this notation. So there is a certain set of picture changing operators here okay, depending on the number of you know, vertices. Okay. And gluing compatibility now requires that on the one pair surfaces, okay, the choice of picture changing operator locations should also be the ones that are induced from the choice on the component surfaces. Okay. So if these are one pi, okay, on these you have chosen some section, which means you have also specified how to locate this picture changing operators. Then on the new Riemann surface that you get by gluing, by plumbing fixture of these two, the choice of picture changing operators should follow exactly the same rules as you induce from here. Is this statement clear? Well, it turns out that even though the statement may be clear, it is wrong. Okay? It is not possible to do this. Okay? And I will explain why it is not possible to do this. Okay? And it is a simple counting exercise. So let us do some counting. So let us call this surface sigma 1 okay. and let us imagine that it has genus G1, M1 NS punctures and N1 Raman punctures. Okay. That is the convention you have been following and this surface is sigma 2 and suppose it has genus G2, M2 NS punctures and N2. Ramon punctures. Okay. Then the number of PCOs on sigma 1 is 2 G1 minus 2 plus M1 plus N1 by 2. Okay. Number of PCOs on sigma 2 is 2 G2 minus 2 plus M2 plus N2 by 2. Okay. So the total which is the sum of the two is 2 G1 plus G2 plus M1 plus M2 plus N1 plus N2 by 2 minus 4. Okay. Now suppose sigma is a new human surface okay, which is obtained by this plumbing fixture okay, and you have to count the required number of PCOs on sigma. Okay. So you have to consider two cases separately. The first case is that the plumbing fixture is at NS puncture. Okay. So then on sigma, we have number of NS punctures 
equal to m1 plus m2 minus 2. Okay, 2 have gone away because we are using the arrest, two of the arrest punctures for plumbing fixture. Number of Ramon punctures is n1 plus n2, nothing has happened to Ramon punctures. And genus, of course, is G1 plus G2. Okay, G is G1 plus G2. So the required number, required number of PCOs on sigma is two G one plus G two minus two plus M one plus M two minus two plus n1 plus n2 by 2, okay? And you can easily check that this number is the same as that, okay? So there is no problem here. So this is fine. Okay. But it is easy to check that if you glue at Ramon puncture, Then the required number on sigma, okay, I will just write down, I mean one can just look at this answer and write it down. So it is G1 plus G2 minus 2. Okay. Now you see the total number of NS punctures is still M1 plus M2 and the total number of Ramon punctures is N1 plus N2 minus 2 because two of the Ramon punctures have been used up. Okay. This one is one more than this number. Okay, that is minus 3, this is minus 4. Okay. So which means that we are missing, if we just follow this procedure, then we will be missing one piece picture changing operator. Okay, we do not have the required number of picture changing operators on sigma. Okay, so somehow we have to find a rule to insert a new picture changing operator on sigma. Okay, just stating this rule is not good enough. Okay, nevertheless, we have to make sure that we do not destroy the nice properties that we described earlier, okay, which will generalize the bosonic string results. Okay. And it turns out that there is a natural choice that one can make. Okay, I will just write down the result for this. So if the plumbing fixture is using this relation, then what you do is that you insert the picture changing operator not at a point, but take the average of picture changing insertion of chi of W1, which is the same as integral d w 2 over w 2 chi of w 2 okay because you can always go from w 1 to w 2 coordinate system and this relation is keeps this <laughs> integral unchanged okay so you insert a picture changing operators in the in the vicinity if you have these two riemann surfaces join do you insert a picture changing operator in this vicinity okay it doesn't matter where you insert it Okay. And you average, take the average of those insertions over the whole circle okay, in this fashion. Okay. And this one can show satisfies all the desired identities 
so that you don't violate any of the nice properties that you wanted for factorization. So this is what one means by gluing compatible choice of sections for type 2 for heterotic strings. Okay, for type 2 there is a similar answer, you have to do insert both integral of chi as x as well as integral of x bar okay, because there is also uh, a Ramon sector from the left. Are there any questions? Yes. Well, I do not know how unique this is. I know this works and a generic choice will not work. Okay, it will violate the factorization property. I mean it is possible that somebody else will find some other prescription at some point right? and then one has to show that this that is equivalent to this. Okay, so now I come to the final topic okay. and this has to do with spurious singularities, the, whether the choice of section exists or not okay, and issues of this kind. Spurious okay. So, the picture that I have given you so far okay. is that we have this PGMN okay, with a base which is Mg M plus N okay, with a fiber and we have some section. Okay. So, you can either choose to look at the full optional amplitude or 1 pi amplitudes in which you will get a part of the section okay. and you have to integrate omega p over this, S, over this section. Okay. That is the general procedure for optional amplitude okay. and this is the same procedure for on-shell amplitudes okay. except that for on-shell amplitudes phi is bearest invariant. Okay. And the issues that I am discussing now, the spurious poles, okay, they exist both for on and off shell amplitudes. Okay. So, it is not that these are special to off shell amplitudes, even if you are try interested only in computing on shell amplitudes in the conventional sense, you will run into this problem. Okay. So, let me explain what the problem is. The problem is that omega p okay, is not well defined everywhere in PGM. Okay. It has spurious poles okay. and those spurious poles occur on a codimension 2 subspace, okay. in fact on many codimension 2 subspaces. Okay. Some are easy to understand, okay. some for example you have this insert some sort of picture changing on pointer right? the mm -hmm. x of y j's. If two y j's come together, okay, that is a codimension 2 subspace of this okay, because one of some of the coordinates of these are the locations of the y j's. So, if two of the y j's come together, then there is a singularity due to operator product singular the standard operator product singularity. So, those codimension 2 subspaces have to be avoided, okay. but it turns out that there are other kinds of singularities which are not directly related to coincident point singularities. Okay. Even when there is no coincident point anywhere, okay, the correlation function suddenly may diverge okay. and that also happens on codimension 2 subspaces. Okay. So, these are what are called spurious poles. Okay, but in our description, we will also include in spurious pole the ones that come from um, collision of picture changing operators. Okay. So, the upshot is that on PGMN, okay, we have to avoid certain codimension 2 subspaces okay, in order to make this integral well defined. But in general, that is not possible. Okay. It is not guaranteed that it is possible to choose this uh, section to avoid those codimension to subspaces on which the uh, integrand becomes singular. Okay. And this has its reflection in the uh, problem of integration over supermodulized space that came up in the last lecture. Okay. So, all of these problems are related to each other. Okay. In this picture changing operator formalism, the problem appears in this form that in general it is not possible to choose sections which avoid this bad codimension 2 subspaces. Okay. 
So, now the question is how do we define these integrals okay, if there are this bad co dimension to subspaces on which the integrand diverges. Okay, so, this is what I will discuss last and then I will stop. Okay. So, it turns out that it is possible to do this using a no notion of what I will call vertical integration okay. and I will give only a very rudimentary description. Okay. The full description is much more involved. So, let us suppose that the base is 2 dimensional. Okay. I cannot draw uh, multi dimensional space here. So, suppose the base is 2 dimensional MGN okay. and the fiber is 1 dimensional okay, which is labeled by one of the yi's. Okay. I am just ignoring the other uh, uh, directions here. Okay. So, in this case, so this is a 3 dimensional mm. PGN and a codimension 2 subspace is a line. Okay. So, let us suppose that you have a line going like this which is a bad line. Okay. You have to somehow avoid it, but how can I avoid it because a section has to run like this. Okay. So, if a section has to run like this there is no way you can avoid this uh, uh, co dimensional or some space right? it has to hit it. So, what you can do is the following okay. you choose you draw some circle here enclosing this co dimension 2 line okay, which in this case is a line. It okay, does not matter how you orient it you just uh, 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 draw a circle like this. Okay. Now, you integrate you choose a section okay, where you integrate okay, outside this surface okay, without hitting the line that you can certainly do right. You just cut out a hole okay. if you are trying to extend the section through this hole you would have hit the singularity okay, but you just consider the integral outside this circle okay, then there is no confusion. Then you go vertically up, okay, which means that you draw a cylinder okay, based on the circle okay, and you go sufficiently high up okay, so that the spurious pole goes out. Okay. So, this is let us call it S1, this is we will call S2 and then you fill the hole here. So, now your section that you choose okay, it is not a section anymore okay, because it has this vertical segment, but it is a continuous manifold linear. So, let me explain what a continuous manifold is. So, this is a three dimensional space so, you come like this in two dimension okay, the spurious pole location is going like this okay, you stop here okay, then you go vertically up okay, then you fill the cylinder there. Okay. So, the spurious pole crosses the vertical segment right, that is the important point okay, and we will see why this helps. But is this construction clear? Okay, in this, if you think of this three dimension, you come the spurious pole is going like this. You enclose it by a circle, do the integral outside, go vertically up, and then close it. Okay, so clearly there is no problem in, in, in integrating in this part and in this part, right? The only issue is how to integrate about this vertical section because this is the place where the spurious pole hits it. Yes, the result will be independent of the radius because that of course is this continuous deformation, right? The only issue is about the spurious pole, right? As long as it is not spurious pole, it is like a continuous deformation of the integration cycle. And because omega is closed, right, for BRC invariant states, omega is closed. Otherwise, the result is not independent, right? But it satisfies the desired identities which will help us get through. Okay. So, now let us see how to do integration about this vertical subspace. So, you see the integration over this cylinder can be done by first integrating in the vertical direction. Okay, you keep a point on the base fixed, just go vertically up, you do that integral first and then you integrate over the base. Okay. So, let us try to see what happens when you integrate in the vertical direction. Okay, that is the dyi integral. right? So, imagine that you are going from u to v dyi. Okay. 
Okay, u is this bottommost point, so let's take a one of these lines. So u is here, v is here. Okay. So when you are trying to do integrate omega, okay, in this case omega is two-dimensional, right? Because we are not taking a two-dimensional section. When you are trying to integrate omega to along this, okay, because here the tangent vector is along the vertical direction, we have to contract omega 2 with a del del yi. Right, because we have to contract omega 2 with the tangent vector of the cylinder. So omega 2 contract to the del del yi, okay, what does it do? It removes chi yi okay, and it replaces it by minus del xi yi. Okay. So now you see that you can do the yi integral explicitly because nothing else depends on yi. Okay. No other operator in the correlation function has any knowledge about what yi is. So we just do integral u to v dyi minus del xi yi and that is xi of v minus xi of u minus xi of v. Okay? The difference in xi between the bottom point and the top point. Okay? And now you see what has happened. Right? There is a singularity somewhere in between. Right? because this line is hitting the singular, uh, the cylinder. But the result is expressed in terms of something which has no singularity because it only depends on insertion of xi on this line where there is no singularity and insertion of xi on this line where there is no singularity. Okay? So this answer is finite, unambiguous okay? and hence we can carry out this integral. Is this Point clear? So this is the way you can avoid this spurious pole problem. Okay? This is of course a very simple situation, okay? but this illustrates the basic idea, okay? how you can avoid this, how, how you can define integration through these spurious singularities. Okay? More formally what it corresponds to is that we choose some section on part of MGN, some section, some other section here okay? and then the fact that this is discontinuous, okay? you have jumped from here to here, you compensate by adding a boundary term, okay? because after you have carried out the integration over yi, the result has to be still integrated over the, in this direction. Okay? So that is an integral over the boundary between these two parts of MGN. Okay? So this is only the tip of the iceberg. Okay? It turns out that the general situation is as follows, that you have to divide the whole moduli space into triangles, okay? you triangulate the whole moduli space. Okay, and you can take the triangles to be as small as you like. On each triangle, you choose a section. Okay, that there is no problem in choosing a section because each triangle you can take to be as small as you like. You cho choose a section to be in whatever way you like. Okay. Then at the boundaries between two triangles, okay, there is the section is discontinuous, right? just like here. Okay, here we had one section, inside we have another section. So at the boundary between two triangles, there is a discontinuous jump and you have to add a correction term to take into account of this continuity. Okay, that is the analog of what you have computed here. But then you can have a situation where three such triangles meet. Okay, even, even in two dimension we can have a situation where three such triangles meet. Okay, so here you have made a correction term, here you have applied a correction term, here you have applied a correction term. But it turns out that is not always enough, you have to also add, apply a correction term here. Okay, that is co-dimension 2. Uh, intersection of the triangles okay. and then there will be co-dimension 3 intersection of the triangles and so on. Okay. So you have to basically go all the way up to co-dimension k, co-dimension k okay, where k is the total number of PCOs which is 2g minus 2 plus m plus n by 2. Okay, and you can basically stop that and you have a complete, one can get a complete prescription of what these correction terms are. Okay. So this is, I should have said, this is uh, some work with uh, mm -hmm. Ed Witten which we are still writing up. Okay, but basically we now know that this procedure is complete and you can compensate. We do not have to choose a, choose a continuous section. Okay, so this also avoids this question of whether a continuous section exists or not. Right? We do not really need to choose a continuous section. Okay. We just choose local sections on each small triangle and then add correction terms at the boundaries. Okay. And that gives an amplitude which, is, which satisfies all the desired identities 
that we need. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. So next time tomorrow, I'll discuss uh, uh, the one-ply effective field theory.